The number one question I get asked all the time is, how do I get work as a producer, mixer, or engineer? And that's a question which doesn't have a simple answer, and there's a lot of other things to consider besides just getting the work. But I think it's something that's important to talk about, not just for a music career, but any kind of artistic career. So earlier today on my live stream, I ended up talking about this for a really long time, and you could go watch that replay, but you'd have to listen to me stumbling through my words. From reverberating, 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 getting my points out of order. I completely missed something. Uh, and the usual chaos that is my live streams. Uh, oh, oh, my God. Oh, Billy. We're going to We're going to shut. So this is an edit of that live stream, but it sticks to the best advice and answers that I can give you, and I hope it helps to answer your questions. It's broken into three sections. Number one. First things first, being prepared. Number two, getting the work. Number three, keeping the work. Before you try to go get work, there's a few things you need to understand. Most importantly is that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And it's going to take a long time. And there's going to be times when you're making some progress and then there's going to be times where it's just kind of dragging on and you're, just going, to, you're going to get despondent and depressed. And you just got to realize this is going to take some time. I worked doing recording sessions and all that stuff for 10 years before I ever made a profit. And then there were times, even after I had hit records, where making a lot of money and we're doing great, and then there's like, oh man, nothing's going on for months at a time. It's just, this is how it is. So you've got to be prepared for a hard life. Try to work under some pros. Find some people who are great producers and mixers and see if you can get in their studio. Even if you got to take out the trash, do some vacuuming, make them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, do whatever you can to work with people who are kicking butt. Do something that's going to make their lives easier and then you can watch them work. Even just go visit studios. Just ask for studio tours and just talk to them and see what their studio looks like and ask them about their gear and, and who knows, maybe that leads to you being able to hang out. But that's one of the best things you can do to get into the business. You want to surround yourself with people who are already doing it. Expand your skills and diversify. If you're a mixer, learn how to produce. If you're a producer, learn how to mix. Learn how to work in different genres. Go out and learn how to mic live instruments. Go learn how to mic a banjo. Go work at a live venue and do live sound for a while. You'll learn a lot. I would also suggest anybody to learn how to play an instrument. At least learn how to bang around on the keyboard a little bit and play major and minor chords and a few other things. But if you can learn how to play a guitar or bass, even just at a mediocre level, it's going to put you so far ahead because it gives you the ability to just lay down some basic parts. So it's going to help you communicate with more advanced musicians. Diversify because it's going to be harder and harder to specialize in this business if you're only doing one genre and one skill set. Be frugal and live cheaply. Do not get into debt. This is like one of the most important things. Don't get a new car. Buy a used car. Even if it's just a year old, you don't need it. The best thing you could do is buy a clunker, which is I've always done. All my cars, even when I was working on Hurt Records, I always drove beat up cars. And if I was embarrassed by my car and I was going to a music industry event, I would just park two blocks away and walk there so nobody would see my car. But the reason I did that is because separate from having a music career, buying a new car for anybody, it's a bad idea. The way the loans work, unless you got the money and you're paying cash, in which case I'd say still buy a used car because the value of a car drops so much in the first year, it used to be better buying a year old car. But the other thing that's really important is look at all your expenses and get rid of anything you don't absolutely need. If you got this extra subscription on your cable channels or whatever, and you can knock some of that off and, and you end up saving 100, 200, 300 bucks a month, you know, eat out less and all that, you got to consider that's cumulative. That extra money you're paying each month might be the difference between you having to work another day or two or so at a job that you have, a regular job, instead of working on projects for people or developing clients or just back at your home studio, developing your skills. And over the course of a year, you're talking about weeks worth of time that you're going to be at a job where you can't do anything as opposed to being home. So get rid of every expense that you possibly can. I'm going to hand it over to Crystal, who is the real brains behind this operation, to talk about some financial stuff. One of the things that Billy said was keep your expenses low. That is one of the first things that you can do to help make sure that you've got some longevity in this. One of the parts of this is you need to have an emergency fund. If possible, put an automatic draft 
to feed into that emergency fund every month. You want the fund to be something that can be liquid cash if you need it. A money market account is a good choice or a high yield savings account. Either one is going to earn a little more interest than if you just have it in your bank savings account. You're going to need that emergency fund both for unexpected critical expenses, if you have a car issue or a health issue or who knows what, but also to help sustain you on months that are leaner months. Pay your taxes. File your taxes. I don't know exactly how this works for some of our international listeners, but here in the U.S., you need to make sure that you're reporting your income, whether you're as self-employed or whether you set up a business for your music stuff. If you've missed years in the past, file it late and set up a payment plan if you owe any money. Work with a good accountant to help you with this. Don't just hand it off and let them do it. Educate yourself as you go through. Ask your accountant questions. Learn how this works. Track all of your income. Every deposit that you make, make a note of exactly where and who it came from and what it was for. You're going to need that information. Also, keep track of all your business-related expenses. It's not just stuff like you buy yourself an instrument or an amp or a piece of outboard gear or a microphone. Those are all very important. But it's also things like all your cables, monthly expenses you might have. If you have a critical subscription like Pro Tools, that is a deductible expense for your business. The instrument supplies, strings, if you have to get your instrument repaired. And this is where you talk to your accountant. Things like your internet bill, your phone bill, a new computer, these are potentially business expenses as long as they're not more used for personal use. The last thing I wanted to say is don't give up. If you dream of music or any creative career being your career, you have to treat it like that from the beginning. This is your business, so you need to treat it like that. Even if you're having fun, remember that you have to keep your stuff together. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Well, thanks, Crystal. That's kind of why I have a career. I'm going to move on now to getting the work. How do you get the work? The first thing you got to do is learn how to self-promote. And don't be embarrassed by it because you self-promoting is not going to be perceived by most people as like, oh, he's just talking about himself. They'll just be like, oh, he's motivated. But the best way to promote is to get other people to promote for you. And the way to do that is find an artist or a band that is very active and they're good. They're out doing things and they are promoting themselves and offer to do some songs for free for them. And just tell them that they can't tell anybody else that you're working for free. But here's what's going to happen. If you do a good job, which you need to make sure you do the absolute best that you can, they're going to go play that stuff for somebody. And if you've also got a great relationship and you've gone the extra mile and done this extra stuff and all that, they'll talk about you. And that is the key to how I built my business. And this is something I've talked about on my live streams before, but I'm going to bring it up again. I did a lot of work with a rapper named Bone Crusher. I met Bone in the late 90s. We'd done this project, and when it ended, I just really liked him. I thought he was cool, so I hit him up on the phone and took him out to Taco Bell and bought him a couple of burritos and said, hey, let's do some songs together. And that turned into a lot of songs, but then it was like, oh, wow, everything we did, even little demos, he'd go play for everybody. So I just made sure that before I gave him a demo on a cassette, it was on cassettes back then and later CDs, that I just killed it, made it as good as possible. And he would take that stuff and play it for everybody in Atlanta. Sometimes he'd like talk his way into the local radio station. They'd play it late at night. But Bone did so much advertising for me. So I started making this kind of rule that at any one moment, I always had one project that was a pet project that I picked out that I was going to do for that purpose to get my work out there and heard. And also sometimes to challenge myself. Maybe they were doing something that was a little more country or a little more rock. But it always had to be somebody, and this is the key thing, it has to be somebody who's going out and actually doing something. It doesn't matter how good they are if they're just sitting in their house. You need to find people who are out gigging, self-promoting, and doing things. Another way you can do that if you don't know people like that is go out and go to where there are live performances. Go to open mics, go to see local bands, and listen to them and go talk to them and make friends with them. And you don't know where that's going to lead. That's one of the best things you can do. Like, just go out to the clubs and meet artists and expand your you know, I hate to say network because people always say, oh, we're going to network. I don't network. I don't think of it as networking. I think of it as making a lot of friends, building relationships. And that's how you should do it too. Go to the networking events, but don't think about networking. Oh, I'm going to hand out my business card and then they're going to call me up. No, make friends with people and be of value to them. The other thing that's really important about getting work, and this kind of ties into what I said about expanding your skills and diversifying, is differentiate. 
if you want to get work, you got to ask yourself, what makes you different? Are you doing the same quality work as other people out there or is it better? Do you have a different angle or are you able to not only produce but play some instruments or maybe you can work across different genres, which is something I've always done. That's how I differentiated myself, that I could do rap, country, jazz, bluegrass, heavy metal, rock, whatever, because I played in top 40 bands for years and I knew how to play all these top 40 songs. And, us, you know, that taught me how to do that stuff. I didn't realize that's what I was doing at the time. I just wanted to get out of the house and go in a van and meet chicks and play gigs and stuff like that. But I did learn a lot along the way. So make sure that you find a way to differentiate yourself. And sometimes that differentiation isn't just about your skills. It's about you as a human being, as a person. And that kind of ties into the other thing is that you need to make sure that you are always answering your phone calls, direct messages, emails, be prompt, be professional. That's another way to differentiate yourself, being on top of things, being ahead of everybody. You need to be ahead of everybody where the technology is concerned, prepping for sessions, music industry news, whatever. You need to be ahead of everybody so that when you meet them, you can talk about things and they'll be like, what? And then suddenly you become like the guy who knows things. That's so valuable, so valuable to be able to just inform people of things in a session. You just turn, hey, did you know blah, blah, blah? And they're like, whoa. And I tell you, that kind of stuff can make a difference. Like, oh, that guy's, that guy's together. Get the files. Get the files. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and they're not totally sure if they're going to hire me because I'm a little bit more expensive. Sometimes I'll tell people before I quote them a price, I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, can I see what it looks like? And I get them to send me the session before I quote the price because once I get the files... Even if they say no, I'm like, I don't know. I think I could do a good job. There's been a couple of times I just went ahead and mixed it anyway. Just slaughtered it. Just absolutely slaughtered it. And I send them like, maybe I cut off the last 30 seconds or something. Like, yeah, well, I did it anyway. What do you think of this? And they're like, oh, damn. Once you get the files, it's up to you. If you're willing to put the energy in, you can just do the work anyway. And, and maybe in the end, they say, nah, never mind. We found somebody else. But even if you have a great mix, they might hire their buddy who's just got better weed. I don't know. But in the process, you'll learn. Every time you do a session, every time you do a mix, you're going to learn something. In the beginning, take advantage of every opportunity you can. Take advantage of every platform out there. There's all these little mixing websites where people can go and hire a mixer and, you know, there's not much money in it. But if you hit all of them, it, who knows what it could lead to? Because it only takes one artist to make all the difference, just the right artist. And you never know where you're going to meet them. Keeping the work. Once you get the work, how do you keep the work? You need to be the best at your work and your work needs to be bulletproof. You can't take any shortcuts. Whether you're a producer, a mixer, or engineer, you can't go, ah, nobody will notice it. Trust me, people will notice or they'll sense that something's wrong. Your work has to be bulletproof because the only thing that matters is what comes out of the speakers. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what comes out of the speakers. Make yourself indispensable. Be so good and so together and so on top of it that they're just like, oh, wow. Be a problem solver. Production and mixing isn't just about sound. Sometimes it's about how people are thinking about their music, how they're approaching things. Help lead them through the process, help solve their problems, and help elevate their growth, and they'll hire you again. And also be a good human. Be a good person. Sometimes your clients are being kind of a pain in the butt or they're freaking out and all that. You got to put yourself in their shoes. They're going through their own stresses and they're sometimes paranoid about mixers and producers because they might not understand what you're doing. Just be kind and try to show some empathy and compassion before you fly off the handle and start yelling at them. And then finally, I'm going to repeat this again. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So it's a long road. You just got to stick to it. 